From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. I don't think that I've ever seen uh, Jack more excited about doing a program as he is today. There's so much to share because there's so much deception out there about some of the things we're going to be discussing. Uh, in fact, this first one is very, very important. This headline is the Jesus of Islam, the same Jesus of the Bible and Christianity. Quite a question. And we definitely will deal with that. You'll have no questions in your mind after Jack gives you the Bible. Secondly, top U.S. official warns of European jihadist sleeper cells. That's where many of them are in Europe. And my Jack, I'm so sorry because all of his relatives living in Belgium, they've got a real problem over there. You really, yeah, they really yeah. do. And then, Islam will take over the world in a decade. Are you kidding? A decade, that's only 10 years. They expect to take over the whole world in 10 years? If we don't do something, friends, it's going to get worse and worse, believe me. Well, you all know that Jack was in the hospital, and while he was there, I interviewed guests, Jack, while you were away, as you well know, and my first guest was Dr. Carl Ball. When he arrived here at the studio, I couldn't believe what he told me, that he had seen some billboards, unbelievable billboards, that uh, was certainly not a real message. I want you to take a look at them. We've referred to them before. Same family, same message. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Mohammed. Why Islam? Why Islam? Oh my, oh my. And then going on, find Jesus in the Quran. Well, uh, we researched this, and I said, Dr. Ball, you're absolutely right. They have put these up. They put up so many across the country, and we're going to investigate it, and so we did. And you know what we found? That it certainly was a distortion of the truth, a distortion of the truth. Don't you agree with that, Jack? Oh, Rexella. You know, I'm the kind of guy that searches things. I've done a lot of studying in my life. I have 12,000 volumes at home that I've read, and I've marked them. I've had 18,000 Bible verses I've memorized, and I started to memorize the Quran, and I've got over 300 texts memorized from it. And so when I consider what they're saying, the lies they're telling, damnable heresies, as mentioned in 1 Peter 2, verses 1-3, I am going to use the Quran because people say, oh, Dr. Van Ippie, it can't be that way. They can't be doing that. Oh, yes, they can. Here is that Quran. And everything today is different from Bill O'Reilly and Hannity and uh, these wonderful people on television because they never put the scripture on there from the Quran. I do. And you'll not get out and say it couldn't be. They wouldn't say that. They said it, and it's rotten. What they say about my Jesus is the most rotten thing that's ever been told. And I won't stand for it. I don't care if I have to give my life for it. I'll defend my Jesus to the very end. But you're not going to get away with your lying trash about the Lord. The Quran and the Bible are not the same as you're going to see. All right, Jack, that is exactly what I was thinking just a moment mm -hmm. ago, the distortion. The great distortion that they are giving on those billboards is that the Jesus in the Quran is the same as the Jesus of the Bible. And Jack, the Jesus in the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible, right? Oh no, first of all, their leader, and remember he came out of a number of 360 gods, one for every day of the year in the eighth century. And his name was Allah, and he was the moon god. And he said, Anyone who believes that Jesus is the Son of God will burn in hell forever, and you'll also be in that same hell if you believe in a trinity. Now, to some of you people, this is going to sound so far-fetched, you'd think I am creating it. I'm not. This is the Quran. I've read it through three times. 
I've memorized 300 texts. And when I tell you something, I will show it to you on the screen so you can't say, oh, he's exaggerating. No, I am not. <laughs> that Jesus, if we call him the Son of God or that he's a member of the Trinity, will make us bound for hell forever and forever. That is what the Quran taught. Where? All right. Surah chapter 5, 6, 7, 9, 11, 12, and chapter 19, verses 33 and 88. Look it up. What blasphemy. Now, here is our Bible, and they said that the Quran and the Bible are the same about Jesus. If you say that Jesus is not the Son of God, you're an Antichrist. There are 1 billion, 200 million Muslims in the world. That's 1 billion, 200 million liars. Yeah, and call them what this book calls them, Antichrist against Christ. And boy, you are against the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, does it teach he's the Son of God? Scores of times. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's verse 36 as well. 1 John 5, 11 to 13, this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son does not have life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, not hope so, think so, guess so, know that you have eternal life in it. You don't believe he's the Son of God. You're an antichrist, and you're the one who's going to burn in a Bible hell forever. Jesus preached about hell more than anyone else in the Bible. Listen to him in Luke 16, 23, when he talks about the rich man who wanted nothing to do with Christ. And Jesus said, in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. And he see the Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, Father Abraham, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Hell is real, ladies and gentlemen. And Revelation 21, eight says, the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and whoremongers, murderers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone. And it's the second death. In Revelation 22, 15, he says, Outside of heaven are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loves and makes a lie. You think your little white lies aren't going to get you into trouble? Wait and see. You'll be crying for that cool water like the rich man was in hell. Mm. You know, Jack, I'm so glad we don't have to go there. Yeah. We don't have to go there. No one has to go there. And that's why Jesus came. Now, I'm going to show you on the screen who Jesus really is. This is the Jesus of the Bible. First of all, he was the Son of God. And God said to Mary that she was going to have a baby, and his name would be Jesus, Son of God, virgin born. Going on, while he was on earth, of course, he loved people. He loved them, he fed them, he preached to them, he healed them. How wonderful, he loved them. Well, this is why he came, to die for our sins. Oh, thank you, Lord. Nobody has to go to hell. You died for us. And then going on, praise the Lord, the resurrection day. This is number four of who he really is, the five fundamentals. The resurrection, how great it is, that's Mary weeping by the empty tomb. And then, of course, Christ is coming back. Oh, I love this. Coming back to set things straight, and he's going to stop that Armageddon, and he's going to bring peace on earth, goodwill to men, and praise the Lord. Friends, this is the real Bible. This is the real Son of God. This is the real Jesus. Right, Jack? Oh, you're right.
Rex Sully, yes. And I'll tell you, it is so blasphemous when you pick up this book, the Quran, and read what they have done to Jesus. And I'll give you the verses in a minute. You look it up. And I pray that it'll make you so disgusted with what they teach about this precious Jesus that you'll give your heart to him, even if it means leaving your old faith. Now, Jesus comes back and he says, I lied. I'm not a deity. I'm not the Son of God. I didn't die on a cross. I wasn't resurrected from the dead. None of this is true. I rigged it all. It was my story. And I want to go on to say, since I've left you Christians, I've now become a Muslim. I'm one of you. And I am a prophet, not a deity, as I said. And it is my job to put to death every Jew, every Christian, everybody who is non-Muslim in the future. And we're going to give you that. We're going to prove that to you. But you say, where is it in this Quran? Surah 4, verses 157 to 59, 172 and 73. Chapter 5, verses 72 and 73. Chapter 6, verse 19. Chapter 9, verse 30. And chapters 19, verses 33 and 88. All blasphemies against the Lord. No wonder, Peterson, there shall come false prophets among you who privately, secretly shall bring out damnable heresies, even denying Jesus that bought them. Boy, St. Peter was really on when he marked you folks as to what you were, a bunch of fable tellers, liars, and anything to promote your religion. I said already, all you have to say in your religion is say, Tekiah, and it's all forgiven. We don't get away with it that easily. When we lie and we don't repent and change and make it right, we burn in hell forever for that. Not because we say Jesus is the Son of God. You folks are following Allah. He says, all who say that Jesus is the Son of God, he will cast into hell. He, yes. Well, my God's name is Jehovah or Yahweh. And guess what it says? He looked at Jesus and said, this is my beloved son yeah. in whom I well please. And you can find it 10 times. Can you imagine Allah throwing our God in hell? Come on, get some brains. Right, absolutely. Well, you know, what are they doing in order to promote their ideas, in order to promote the Quran, in order to promote t taking over the world? Well, here's what they're doing. Take a look, please. Top U.S. official warns of European jihadist sleeper cells. Now, European, where are they? In Great Britain in Germany, in Italy, and they have a concern for our Washington European allies, believe me. And then Italy arrests suspects in Islamic State plot to attack Israeli embassy. Where? In the Vatican, yes. And Belgium plans to provide all residents, oh, Jack, with anti-radiation pills. Anti-radiation. Yes, they're planning on doing something terrible to the oh, citizens Oh, with atomic weaponry. So all these Belgians will get these pills. Why bother? Okay, well, we're going to go on with something else that they are doing here, friends. Terrible. Muslim terrorists sneak into the U.S. with help of the drug cartels. Well, you know, will you help us out here? We need to get in here, and they're helping them. Here we are, preacher on Palestinian Authority TV, leads Friday prayer calling for genocide of Jews and atheists. Actually, let me oh, stop my. that for a minute. Yes. This is one of their preachers, and he says they go to prayer, and they have to go to prayer five times a day, but not when they want to, not when they feel like it. It has to be right on those time periods, five times daily. Can you imagine them getting on their knees and going through all that? Say, now that we've prayed, let's go out and find a sword and get a few people. God forgive you. Oh, Jack. This next one breaks my heart. I think it will, you too. ISIS executes 250 girls for refusing to become sex slaves. Oh, man. Can you believe it? Oh, okay, Jack. The other day they took a bunch of girls and they raped them. And then they took them and said, guess what? We're going to stone you because you committed adultery. 
you filthy pigs. You rape the girls and then you kill him on top of it because they did what you did to them. I'll tell you, this is a religion that doesn't make sense. Oh, Jack, it's heart moving, so heart moving. Then I'm going to go on here with what they're doing to Christians. Eleven Christians killed every hour, says Irish Bishop. Oh, my, oh, my. You know what, friends? That is at least 100,000 Christians killed every year and more. Oh, going on here, number of Christians killed for their faith doubled in 20. 13. Now, friends, this is what they are doing in order to promote Islam. In a moment from now, we're going to be discussing what their ultimate goal is. They're doing it, but what's their goal in everything that they're doing? Oh, Jack, horrible things. You know, I'm so proud of Dr. Ben Carson. And he said, if I ever became president, I would not allow a Muslim to have office. Why? Because he was thinking about Sharia law. Sharia law is so different from the Ten Commandments, as we're going to see in a minute. But you know, I've taken a real loving for this man because he's intellect. And he would do what's right. He's got a great Christian experience. He's a true evangelical. Some of these guys are, are talk about being evangelicals and they don't ever take a stand for Christ. I believe you've got to be a fundamentalist evangelical. You'll believe what you're preaching and you'll die for it. Now, listen very carefully to what I'm saying. This Ben, a little black boy, grew up where I did in the inner city of Detroit, a poor black needy family. Not far from their home was a poor Belgian needy family. There were times we had nothing to eat in the house. They had come from Belgium as immigrants legally. And we had nothing, nothing. But oh, I'll tell you, could you believe this? I went to Gabriel Richard School for kids, five years of age, kindergarten, and I couldn't speak. English. <laughs> so the teacher said, you know, we have a hard time with him because he doesn't make sense. <laughs> How could I? But Ben had some of the same background, so I guess we kind of identify. But he said, here is what's wrong. They've got a different law. Different law. They're going to set up their law now in England. You wait and see. And Sharia law says, you kill your daughter, she has premarital sex. Do you know there's 27 girls killed now in our country? And they don't know where they're buried. And the father, son, or cousin murdered them because they had premarital sex. And yet their sons can go out and commit sin. And when they do, and when they kill someone, they get 72 virgins. Figure it out. Great reasoning, huh? And I said this a couple of weeks ago, and I'm going to say it again. I am angry when you put 72 virgins in heaven for all eternity and make it a whorehouse. Think it over. And they kill all apostates, their own. The Shiites and Sunnis have murdered one million between them simply because part of them say our leader is Muhammad, the others say, well, it's one of his relatives who leads us. Forgive them, God. Then finally, they kill all infidels. That's anyone who is not a Muslim and will not convert. It's convert or die. And I'm going to tell you something that is shocking. Great leader Mark Gabriel, one of the great men who have left the Muslim faith, has warned that since the Crusades, they have murdered 300 million Christians. Enough said. And I'll tell you, they're using the sword everywhere, Rex. I'll keep on. Yes, I'm going to continue on because they have an ultimate goal. And this is their goal. Take a look, if you will, please. Jet Iman, Islam will take over the world in a decade. That's 10 years. And they say the countdown has begun to the great battle with the infidels around the world. 10 years, their goal and isn't projected to be the world's largest religion by 2070. And then, here we see Mohammed Kabani, 
and we all I know what he had to say, the chairman of the Islamic Supreme Council of America. We see that the Mahdi will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of Islam. The Mahdi will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. If they accept it, they will be spared. Otherwise, what? They will be killed. And listen to this. And Prophet Jesus will be the executioner under Mahdi, and Islam will be victorious over all the religions. God forgive them. Amen. God forgive them because they make our Jesus into a murderer. Horrible, horrible. I'm going to put something on the screen now. These are the words of, from the Quran. And Jack, would you like to read them as to how they're going to accomplish all this? And this is Jesus they're making to do this. All right, seize them and kill them, unbelievers, wherever you find them, Surah 489. If you encounter those who disbelieve, strike their necks, behead them, Surah 74. Give firmness to the believers, Muslims, to do it. I will instill terror into the hearts of the unbelievers, all non-Muslims. You smite them above their necks and smite all their fingertips off them, Surah 812. When you encounter the infidels, strike off their heads, Surah 47.4. My Jesus isn't responsible for this kind of murder. He follows the Judaic commandments, thou shalt not kill. Exodus 20:13. Well, you know what, Jack? To me, after you repeating everything that they believe from the Surahs, it's impossible to combine the religions. How can you put Christianity and Islam together saying that we are the same? It's impossible. Oh, you can't have prayer meetings together. That's malarkey. That's a bunch of Christian ministers who don't stand on God's holy word. Now, if you want to obey God, listen carefully. Ephesians 5, 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Listen to this one. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with the devil? What part of he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God, your bodies, with the temple of idols and demons, their bodies? Wherefore, wherefore, these five reasons come out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord God, and touch not the unclean ones and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. One more. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not the Father. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ is both the Father and the Son. If there comes any man to you and brings not this doctrine of Christ, being the Savior, being the Son of God, receive him not into your house or church. Why? Because then you're partaker of his evil deeds, and you'll be lost with him forever. Come out from among them, and don't get into these phony meetings where you get together with these people who pray for everyone's death. You know what, Jack? I think the Bible's very clear. He's giving you the Bible, and it's very clear. The Bible is God speaking, and he says, don't try to combine the religions. You can't, because they're opposite. But I would say to you, come to the real Jesus. Jesus came for you. You know, if you were the only person on earth, Jesus would have come. That's how much he loves you. Oh, I pray that right now when Jack prays this prayer of accepting Jesus as Savior, you will pray it if you don't know him already. Have you opened your heart? Will you be saved? Will you ask him to be your Savior? Please pray and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, be your savior. Jack. Oh, 1 John 4, 14, the Father sent his Son to be the savior of the world, amen. And he died a horrible death on that cross. Oh, how he suffered. And he did it for you and did it with all of his heart because he wants you with him forever. So pray it because he's coming soon. You want to be with him and all of us, amen. Lord Jesus, thank you, precious Savior, for the cross, for the suffering and agony as your blood flowed 
to cleanse me from every sin I've ever committed. Oh, Jesus, come into my heart now. I receive you this day as my own personal Savior. And look forward to being with you and all the saints who've gone on before. Come into my heart, Jesus. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer. You just became a child of God if you did. And there is the uh, address I'd like to hear from you. Let me know. I'll send you this little book of first steps in a new direction. You can walk a new direction, have a new life in Jesus. Now, woo, I'm extending this not very long. Who is Jesus? We've been talking so much about this on this program. Take a look, please, at the promo. America and Canada beware. Doctors Jack and Rex Sullivan have be warned about Muslim terrorist organizations who are planning attacks in America and Canada in 2016 and 17. The bloody ISIS murderers already claim to be in all 50 states and much of Canada. The greatest heartbreak to believers is the blasphemy against our God and Savior Jesus by the Islamic religion. To them, he is not the Son of God, nor the Savior of the world, but instead the executioner of all Jews, Christians, and non-Muslims. For details, order the most dynamic video study the Vanapies have ever released, Who is Jesus? This video indicates we undoubtedly are the rapture generation. The rapture generation, Jesus is coming back very soon. And if you prayed that prayer a moment ago, you are ready because you recognized who Jesus was. And my bonus, there's the 800 number and there's the address. Please call. I have a bonus. This is Jack's wonderful book. We'll talk more about it in a moment. Here's Chuck to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order Who is Jesus? Have your credit card ready and call toll free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NIA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. I just want to say, don't put it off. It's a limited offer. Who is Jesus? The most important offer ever. And my bonus with your order. I just want to leave you with this wonderful, wonderful thought. I've used it before, but it's important. Stand on the Word of God, and you won't fall into error how to look forward to being your home again next week and until then please remember god cares for you so do we so very much 